don't tell my boss, but I just spent the last two days working on a video that shows how easy it is to move away from convex. Lock-in is something that has always concerned me, and I think you guys too, judging by this comment on Theo's latest video. It's a pretty hard lock-in. You either self-host the entire thing, or you switch to the modular pieces. As you said, these functions are transactions, and it matches queries. You cannot easily replicate this behavior, and that's the lock-in, the behaviors and the mindset. So that sent me down the route of finding out how hard actually would it be to migrate away from Convex? Now, as this author mentioned, Convex is open source and as such comes with the ability to self-host the entire backend, including the dashboard yourself. There's full docs on it over at GitHub. And I think this certainly would be the quickest and easiest way of going about migrating away from the lock-in of Convex Cloud. But I think that would probably be defeating the purpose for many people. I presume that if you're afraid of lock-in like the author mentioned, then you are probably looking to move to a different database and set of technologies altogether. So with that in mind, once you've dropped me a like and subscribe, let's get into and find out what it would be involved with replacing our convex code with something else. All right, so we have this very simple React convex app here. Um, it might be familiar to you if you have ever started a convex project with V template using NPN create before. You can click on this button, which add numbers to the array here. It's pretty simple. So let's have a look at the code for this. So we have this very simple schema here with just one table, numbers, and with just one field, value. And let's have a look at our convex functions here. So as you're probably no doubt aware, convex has three kinds of functions, queries, mutations, and actions. Queries and mutations can directly access the database and are transactional, actions are not. So I think the first step in thinking about how to move away from convex would be how we would migrate these functions. The way that I think I'm going to do it for this is I'm going to convert these into Tanstack Start server functions. And if you aren't familiar with Tanstack Start, it's this really cool new framework for building React applications that are server-side rendered optionally, um, very much like Next.js or something like that. I could have probably done this whole thing with Next.js, but I just got done making a video about Tanstack Start, so I'm more familiar with it at this point. But anyway, so let's just stub out our Tanstack Start functions now. So here we can see it looks pretty similar to our convex functions from before. We have our list numbers query here at the top that validates our input with Zod instead of convex's own validator library. And for now, I've just mocked out the numbers to this array at the top here. And we will look at how to do the database uh, in a minute. And we can see that our add number mutation is another Tansac start server function with a Zod validator writing into our mock database numbers array. And finally, our myAction server function is able to call into our queries and mutations directly uh, and get the results as with our convex action from before. Right, so thus far, the migration is looking pretty simple. We just swap out our convex functions to these um, Tansac start server functions. But how does it look like on the client side? So before we would run our query like this, and this is how we would do our mutations. And this is how we actually call the mutation. And it's all pretty simple and pretty clear if you ask me, if you're familiar with convex. But now to call our Tanstack start server functions, we need to swap out our query with something that looks like this. So here we're using react query with a query key and a query function to call our list numbers server function with a count of 10. Then to do the mutation, we would uh, swap this out for this. And then to use the mutation, we would just call it like this. So far, so good. Not too many extra lines needed. Looks quite a lot like our convex code, so that's nice. We aren't quite done yet though. You see, one of the biggest selling points of convex is that everything is reactive. That means that our use of use query uh, here before um, is effectively a live query. So when we added a number down here from before, it was gonna be automatically updated and React is gonna re-render this component for us. Unfortunately, Tanstack start um, slash React query doesn't have this ability. So instead, we need to add a few more lines to our mutation to manually invalidate our local query, causing it to rerun to get our numbers once again. Okay, so now with that done, everything should work as before. So when I click on our button here, adding our numbers to our list, cool, it updates. 
Unfortunately, though, if I just stop the Tanstack start server and start it again and refresh the page, then we'll see that our lovely set of numbers has been reset. Ah. That's because we aren't actually saving our numbers to a database. We're just, it's just an in memory uh, array of numbers right now. Right. So thus far, I think we're doing pretty well with our delocking. Is that a word? I don't know. It should be a word if it's not. We've migrated our server functions to a nice open source, non locked in version in the form of Tanstack start. And so this is kind of what I want to do for the same for, for the database. I don't want to be locked into another cloud database. So that means Firebase and Superbase are kind of out of the picture. And instead what I'll do, I'll just go for a regular old Postgres database running locally for now. But don't worry though, I'm not going to call the database with raw SQL. I'm not some sort of savage. I'm going to pull in Drizzle ORM for a convex like API to access my local Postgres database. So we can set up a Drizzle schema like this. Note we had to define underscore ID and create it at ourself. Um, with Convex, we get those automatically with every table. Um, and then we also have our array of numbers here. We have to manually manage our migrations with Postgres Drizzle. So after a quick NPX Drizzle kit push, we can then go ahead and update our server functions like so. So now our list numbers query is going to select from our numbers table order by created at descending before just returning those numbers. And our add number mutation is going to insert the value into the database. And note just here that the conversion to string, I think this is something to do with Postgres numeric versus JavaScript number precision or something like that. Anyway, let's take this for a spin now. So as before, we can add a random number and again, it invalidates our local state and calls our list numbers query again. And it works. So, um, and if we now turn off our Tanstack start dev server and start it again and refresh the page, our numbers are still there. Very nice. All right, so, so far, this is all pretty good. We've converted our convex functions to Tanstack start server functions and our convex database over to Drizzle ORM running on Postgres with not too much effort in my opinion. But the issue here is that this code is starting to look a lot less like our original code and thus would probably mean there's going to be a lot more work involved with migrating our existing convex code over to this new form. Let's see if we can tidy things up and improve this a little bit. So me and my buddy Claw just knocked out this little wrapper for Drizzle ORM so that our server functions can now look something like this. So check this out. We can now query our database in our list numbers query here, and it looks very, very similar to the convex one. And the same goes for our add number mutation here. It looks just like our convex one from before. This is nice, but I reckon we can go one step further. Let's have a look. Ooh, look at this. Now we have something that looks almost exactly like our convex functions from before. We have our query, our mutation, our action, each has an args and a handler. The args are nicely typed and we're able to access the database from the context and get nicely typed results. Our action even has the ability to run queries and mutations and get the typed results back. Very, very nice. So in theory now, you should just be able to copy and paste some convex code into this new framework, change a couple of imports, and it should just work. Uh, kind of. You may have noticed that these convex functions aren't actually exported. You have to scroll down a little bit to see the actual exports. It turns out that Tanstack Starts Bundler expects create server function to be the top level assigned to a const and exported. So unfortunately that means we have to do a little bit of boilerplate rather than having nice wrappers that I wanted. But eh, oh well, it's pretty close anyway. Oh, and by the way, I will leave this mini framework translation code, whatever you want to call it, down below in the description if you want to check it out. Right, so now we have an API that looks very similar to Convex from before, but there is one subtle difference that we need to address. If you've watched my What is Convex video, then you will know that Convex queries and mutations run in transactions. To show you what I mean, let's check out this Convex mutation here. Here we take a value and insert it into our database. 
But then later in the mutation, we do something here that may or may not throw an error. If it doesn't throw, then we insert another number. And if we just show this in action in the dashboard, if I select the function and run it with a number other than 69, then we'll see that both numbers are added to our table above here. But if I enter 69 as my number, then no numbers are actually added and we get an error. So this is showing that this first insert line gets dropped. That's because convex mutations are a transaction. So everything within the handler must succeed for it to be accepted, for all database rights to be accepted. And this is very much intentional on Convex's part. It's to prevent very common mistakes in application development, which can lead to corrupted state. Trust me, as your application grows, this is a very easy mistake to make. Now, if we head back into Tanstack start land and we create a function that looks the same, and then we try this out by creating a little temporary button on the front end, we'll see that when I click this add random number button here, we get both our number and the one, two, three from before. But if I click the add 69 button, then we only get the 69. So effectively our data has entered this corrupted and unexpected state, which would be a nightmare to try and debug um, in an application at scale. So we need to handle this somehow. Fortunately though, Drizzle does have a way to manage transactions. So I'm going to wrap our query and mutations in our little mini library here in transactions. So now when we try it again, I can add a random number to the list as before. But now when I try the add 69 button, bam, nothing. The transaction has failed and therefore roll back the initial uh, addition of the number. Awesome. Now, there are some subtleties around transactions, serial ability. It's probably going to be a bit out of scope for this video. Just be aware that Drizzle uh, Postgres transactions might not be exactly the same as Convex. And to be honest, this is one of the reasons why you might want to use Convex in the first place is because they've already spent a lot of time thinking about all these subtle issues, so you don't have to. All right, so at this point, I think I've covered what would be the core of what Convex is, but I hope you can see at this point that it would just be a matter of plugging in the remaining API holes with other alternatives. For example, maybe the file storage API that Convex provides could be replaced with S3. Maybe the full text and vector search could be replaced with Postgres extensions or maybe another service like Algolia. If you want real-time updates rather than having to do that local cache invalidation, then maybe look at Pusher. Pagination you should be able to handle in Drizzle um, using cursor-based pagination. Auth probably can be handled yourself or with a library like Better Auth or Passport.js or maybe a third-party service like Clerk or Auth0. Scheduling could be done with a library like PGBoss or um, maybe via Redis via a queuing library like BullMQ or maybe a more full-featured queuing library like RabbitMQ. But anyway, you get the picture. At this point, it's just a matter of going through the remaining uh, Convex APIs that you're using and swapping them out for third-party options. I think probably the only one remaining feature of Convex that would be difficult to replicate is Convex Components. They are really pretty powerful and pretty unique feature with no obvious parallels to me that you'll be able to easily swap them out with. So I think probably it's your best bet is to replace the Convex components with maybe some sort of microservice architecture or just simply replace the usage of those components with something else um, you wrote yourself. Oh, and just finally, before we jump into the conclusion, if you are worried about your data being locked into Convex Cloud Database, then you need not worry as there are plenty of ways to back up or stream out your data from the database. Just take a look at the dashboard or some of the docs for examples of how to do this. So I think it's about time to come to a conclusion with all this. I hope I've demonstrated that the API level lock-in isn't as bad as it might seem. The code modifications required to move away from Convex could be manageable with the right approach. However, I would personally say that you'd be taking on a lot more complexity by managing your own infrastructure and implementing your own solutions for features that Convex would just normally handle for you. So while it is possible to rewrite all of this yourself, I would say that if you're worried about lock-in, then maybe you're worried about cloud lock-in, 
maybe then your best bet is just to migrate to Convex self-hosted uh, and just manage that yourself. I think Jamie, the CEO of Convex, put this well when asked about this. Yeah, I mean, in some respects, it's fair. That is true, is that when you work with Convex, because Convex is different, because we have tried to innovate, <laughs> and make something new, you are working in a way that is unlike previous ways. And um, I think that one of the points that Theo made in the video, which I haven't heard made quite this way before, but I agree with, is that like almost any tool that gives you leverage that lets you work faster, you are getting kind of locked in to whatever particular advantage that tool is offering you, right? And so I think one of the ways Theo um, phrased it is, if you tried to take another tool set and make it do everything convex does at, to be able to move as quickly, you would end up writing a bunch of code yourself. And so, um, you know, you, what, what you are kind of locked into is you've accepted a trade-off on like someone else having written that code for you. So one of the point I just want to mention here is that the inverse of all of this is also true. If you find yourself writing a whole bunch of code to create real-time updates, type safe RPC calls, queuing, scheduling, and all that, then maybe you kind of want to consider ditching all that complexity and migrating to Convex instead. And on a personal note, this is exactly why I fell in love with Convex a couple of years ago. I was struggling to implement these features myself in a very hacky way. And then I discovered Convex and I realized that they had done everything I was trying to do, but just a thousand times better. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do leave me a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please do leave them down below. I read every single one. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.